Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Own the Day, Own Your Life. Now, these blokes with the camera, they came in and we've been up for a little while, but we're gonna pretend like we just woke up. <laughs> the only difference is this little girl here, she'd probably be licking my face right now and the blinds would be closed. So the first thing I do when I wake up is I open the blinds and start to get some light in here. We try to keep it as dark as possible at night. Also, then the next thing I do is I go grab my phone and <clears throat> I take a look at the Aura Ring readings from my sleep the night before. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna let me know how well I slept during the night because I don't always remember how well I slept during the night. So when I click the reading, which is this ring right here, it measures all kinds of different metrics. It'll show me a variety of metrics that I can take a look at. And then it'll read me out a final score. My final score today is 75. Not too bad. I slept for six and a half hours. I had 48 minutes of deep sleep, one hour, 16 minutes of REM sleep, four hour, 30 minutes of light sleep for a total of six hours and 30 minutes. That's, that's pretty good. That's a little over four cycles uh, from Nick Littlehill's model that he uses in sleep, trying to get 30 to 35 sleep cycles a week. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But it also leaves me room to do one of my favorite things during the day, which is take a nap. So with that amount of sleep, I'm gonna take a 30 minute power nap during the day. But other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. This one is a champion sleeper. My fiance, <laughs> who you'll see here, Whitney Miller, also known as Miss Two Jits, she is like a sleep hero. She probably slept way better than me. See, she has no ring on her finger other than the uh, diamond one that I gave her because she doesn't need to know because she knows that she always slept great. Isn't that right? That's very true. <laughs> I always get eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> At least. I mean, it's just as many as you want. Mm -hmm. It's just like an all-you-can-eat sleep buffet. Yep. That's great. <laughs> so from here, there's three things that we're going to focus on. Hydration, light, and movement. We've already let in a little bit of light but we're gonna head outside and try and get a little bit more. Uh, but first thing we're gonna do is get hydrated. Now, the other thing that sometimes I do, because she's not that good at jujitsu, is so sometimes, so some sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I'll get her. Sometimes, sometimes I'll teach her a few things about my jujitsu. <laughs> This is a great way to wake up. I love this. She's not, see, she just gave up her back, which is really a really good move against someone with good top control, like me. Yeah. Well, so what just happened there is we got a little head start on our movement. See, aren't you feeling Help more me. awake? Help me, Doobie. Yeah, everybody's feeling more awake. So that's a good head start. Now we're gonna go in, get some hydration. So tell them what you're doing here, Whit. I'm putting 12 ounces of water and a big pinch of Himalayan sea salt and lemon. And for extra credit, apple cider vinegar. Sometimes Whit actually makes her morning mineral cocktail into a tea. Like a lemon. Lemon like, ginger, like apple lemon cider ginger vinegar tea. tea. I like mine old school. Morning mineral cocktail, straight up as it was designed. Now, the purpose of the morning mineral cocktail, overnight, both Wit and I lost over a pound of water just from our water vapors expelling from our breath and potentially any sweat from being underneath the covers. And so rehydrating with the water is going to restore some of that water. In addition, we lost electrolytes and that's what we're replenishing with the sea salt. Sea salt contains upwards of 60 minerals, including of course sodium chloride, which makes the salt, but potassium, magnesium, some calcium, some iron, all kinds of different trace minerals. Uh, so that's gonna be super helpful in replenishing the body and getting us ready for morning movement and our workout that's gonna come and really everything that we have to do. Today. So I'll take some. The lemon is gonna provide some bioflavonoids and also help with uh, some of the vitamins and nutrients that we're gonna get first thing on an empty stomach, along with the apple cider vinegar, which is great for both. Uh... <laughs> Go for it. Sorry. <laughs> It's great for blood sugar regulation as well, and also starts to get the gastric acids flowing so that when I eventually do go for breakfast, my stomach is gonna be nice and warm. So, hydration, we've got a little movement in, we've got a little hydration, we've got a little bit of light, but we're gonna keep increasing the light and the movement 
over the next 10 minutes to really make sure we wake ourselves up without having to reach for our coffee maker. We do love our coffee maker, not first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, morning mineral cocktail. Wow, back to his frat days. <laughs> Don't act like you weren't sorority, girl. You know how to get this done. Are you supposed to check it? You don't have to. <laughs> Hydration. Feels amazing. <laughs> Doesn't it feel amazing? Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I actually really do like that drink. I make it every morning, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's made a big difference, you know. For me, as soon as I started, especially with the sea salt, because everybody, a lot of people do drink water in the morning, but the big difference is adding the Himalayan sea salt, adding the lemon, extra credit adding the apple cider vinegar, but in either way, at least if you have the sea salt and the lemon, it just wakes everything up, makes you feel hydrated, it makes a huge difference, you know, kind of sets the tone for the whole rest of the day. All right, why don't you guys follow us outside? We're gonna jump on the trampoline and get a little bit more light in. Sea salt has been one of those things that's been really misunderstood. And one of the reasons why is actually salt makes your blood a little bit thicker, but that's not a bad thing. Now, for some people who have a really bad pre-existing heart condition, that might be a problem. Those same people who are prescribed aspirin to thin their blood, salt will actually thicken their blood. But really what it's doing is it's just allowing you to retain more water and actually be more hydrated. You know, salt is one of those things that humans need to survive on. And sea salt is better than table salt. Table salt just has sodium chloride and a little bit of iodine. Sea salt has upwards of 60 minerals. You know, the word salary comes from the Latin word salarium, which was an allotment of salt they would give their soldiers. Salt was the thing that the armies marched on. It's the thing that athletes need to perform. It's the thing that we need to feel awake, to move, and to get ready for the rest of our morning movement. So salt is not the enemy. You know, the science has shown out that there is no correlation between increased salt intake and any kind of heart problems or any kind of health problems for anyone taking high amounts of particularly sea salt. And that's just one of those myths that has been around for too long. And it's time that we get rid of it and replace it with some real science. And of course, in addition to the salt, the main ingredient of the morning mineral cocktail is the water itself. The best thing you can get is spring water, particularly in glass bottles. If you can bottle it yourself, that's great. If not, no worries. There's a lot of great companies like this, Mountain Valley. This is the one I use. You'll see me with these green bottles throughout the entire day. And the advantage is that spring water also carries its own amount of electrolytes and minerals that helps to hydrate you naturally. So even though it's not the brightest day out and it's a little bit wet out there, uh, the best thing you can do is get some movement outside and that's gonna allow you to get some sunlight on your body, the photoreceptors in your skin, and also the photoreceptors in your eye, while you get some movement in. So we're gonna go head out to the backyard, play around, and get that done before we head in for our power shower <laughs> to get the day started with some cold exposure. So come on, follow us. So a lot of times we'd head to the trampoline now, but the trampoline is completely soaked and wet. So we're gonna head over to the sand, and we're gonna see if our little wolf wants to play a game of chase. <laughs> so the key with any kind of morning movement, it's not a workout, it's just to get the blood flowing, it's just to start your circadian rhythm, let the body know that it's time to wake up, that it's light outside, that you're doing stuff, and that'll give you a bunch of energy throughout the rest of the day.